Crime Research Cast. How's it going? Okay, so this is sort of a, uh, <laughs> this is one of our uh, supplemental episodes. Not really an episode. I'm, I just want to go over a few things um, that I've noticed and that hopefully I can kind of, you know, weave an argument out of. So a couple weeks ago, I had one of those moments where you just kind of had to binge on a show and I decided to watch HBO's um, Silicon Valley and being being me <laughs> working on the project that I'm working on and uh, with my mindset it was a funny show I enjoyed it um, you know I, I'm a developer so I, I get a lot of the funny jokes yeah I I enjoyed the the show, but I was also quite bothered by it. <clears throat> One of the reasons being is that the show is actually pretty close to true life. It's it wasn't too far off on on several things, and especially the politics. Um, <sighs> and because I have been through several situations like this myself. It just, I decided to make a video uh, regarding it because it's its so frustrating to me. And when you really analyze it and pull back the curtains, you realize that so much of it is because we are currently using a currency-driven economy. Um... One of the things I would like to, one point I would like to bring up is if you didn't notice, go back and think if you, if you watched, if you have watched this, how much of the stress and the chaos and the nonsense was purely driven by money somewhere at some point. It is so crazy to me. Um, I mean, Gavin Belsing's whole thing, you know, he, it, his whole thing is about making money and being successful and, and having the next, the next product that's going to be better than whoever's and, and putting so and so out of business. And that's, that's, a that's a fact of currency driven economies. It, it just, is that's just how it works i would like to also point out that under a stem ep economy everything would be you would work with people companies like that they, they wouldn't be you know competing for anything they'd be working together and i, I want to kind of nip this into the bud before you even ask a question in your mind or bring it up in mentally Often people say, well, okay, then where's, where's the, you know, where's the challenge? Where's the, the, oh, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> where's the competition, right? Where's, where's that sort of, those obstacles that, that help people grow? And true enough, um, such things do do help people grow and innovate and come up with better ideas. But it is a very slow and dirty way to do it. Um, from psychology, we understand that there are several different types of of you know opposition and and of of you know you, you can have antagonism. You can have things that that are you know heavily antagonistic and and you know almost like an enemy that you just have major issues with, and that that's not really healthy competition. It, it is competition, and it does have some of the benefits, but it's not healthy competition, and it sure does not have all of the benefits. In fact, good proper competition actually produces much better innovation okay um, 
and, and we've known this for some time, which is why a lot of companies have started to try to incorporate that sort of atmosphere to get that healthy competition flowing. Uh, so, you know, changing, changing the way we distribute goods and services isn't necessarily a bad thing. So in the show, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a point where they finally got everything going and, uh, and the lead character got kicked out of his role as CEO. And they hired on a new CEO that was supposed to be all gung-ho and you know, go get him and really good CEO. He's brought a lot of companies to the top. And he gets in a fight, or they, they get in a fight and the new CEO, I, I actually had to write down this quote because, oh man, if, if anything irks me, it's, it's stuff like this. He, he asks him, do, do you know what we're selling? Do you, do you understand what our product is? And, uh, you know, the, what's his name? I can't remember the, the, uh, the character's name, the guy that invented Pied Piper. Said, yeah, yeah, it's it's Pied Piper. I, I designed it. I, I should I should know this. And the new CEO says, "No, our product is our stock." And ooh, ooh, <laughs> oh my gosh! If anything can infuriate me it's it's somebody saying some stupid shit like that that is why currency driven economies are dangerous and again I, I just have to reiterate the reason we have been capable of getting to the point where we are of having so many technological and scientific discoveries and advancements and we've been able to build our society up to the point that we have it is because the universe provides an ample amount of energy. And despite the fact that we're wasting a good 45% of that energy coming through the system, just trying to keep the money circulating and keeping that the currency driven economy afloat and keeping it running, we still have enough left over to progress. Now, imagine if all of that was focused on just purely progress, on cooperating. Ad ad adversity is, yes, it's important, but, but you, <sighs> adversity, <laughs> competition, okay? Healthy competition, correct comp competition, competition that's devised in a way to be productive, not to stress people out and destroy people's lives and try to tear other companies down and, and do all this crazy, like, it's just like this stress ball that just knots up and, and destroys things. Good things kind of slip out of it because you're squeezing it so tight that things start kind of slipping out of the whole knot and you get a couple of good things every now and then. But if you have good, I'm getting worked up, calm competition that's healthy and cooperative, the amount that you, you know, harvest off of the, the little stress ball that currency driven economies produce versus the amount that you can harvest off of a system that is cooperative and works together and appreciates each other and feels appreciated by, by the others. It, it's, it's not even comparable. You, you have, <laughs> it's like, uh, what's a good al analogy? It's like beating a dog. Okay. You can train a dog by beating it, but is it going to do the trick? Are you going to have a dog that loves you and obeys you and respects you? You're not, you're not. You, you might get it to, you know, not 
go to the bathroom on your floor. But uh, he's not doing it because he loves you or cares about you or respects you at all. He's doing it because he fears you. This is the same problem we have with the police. For some reason, we've got it in our heads that fear is, is the sort of key to, to respect. And it, and it is completely not. I mean, it has never been. Our, our psychology is such that fear is a destroyer. It's, it's, it ruins things. See, do you see what's happening right now with the police? That's not because the police foster respect. That's because they foster fear. That's because that's what they do. When you get a... Cops don't even need to have a degree to be a cop. They don't need to be intelligent. There's nothing respectable about the requirements for becoming a cop in the first place. Which means just any old douchebag can go and become a cop as long as they don't have any serious charges. But uh, anyway, that point aside, I, I want to read a, a quote by uh, James Harrigan. Now, James Harrigan runs a, a podcast with um, Anthony Davies called Words and Numbers. I've mentioned this before. And I was listening. I just actually subscribed to their uh their Patreon account to get some of the behind the scenes, you know, extra, extra running uh, episodes to listen to, you know, bonus episodes. And he says, and I quote, you don't get, you don't get any. Okay. First of all, they're talking about the coronavirus. Okay. The coronavirus and, and, um, research. Okay. They're talking about the coronavirus and research and getting the good information to the people. Good research with solid information to the people. And he, sw- he says, quote, you don't get any ink if you predict, all right, things are going to be kind of bad. Think more, a little more leth- uh, lethality attached to a flu virus. And what he's saying is, they don't want to give you the good information. <laughs> they want to give you the information that, that gets clicks and you know they want they want to give you the clickbaity stuff they want to give you the information that that uh that that sells covers that that's what they want to sell you that's what they want to give you why because of money it's all driven by money why is nobody seeing this i I know people are seeing this i get that people are seeing this but why is it that we are where we are and still People are happy to, to rely on money. People are happy to be okay that we are still running on money. If you go back and watch all six episodes so far, well, five and a half, I guess, because number six is a four-part series and I've only gotten two done. I have laid out all of the arguments, not all the arguments, I have a lot more and there's I, I'm probably going to have another 20 episodes, 20 more episodes before I start doing the interview phase. But uh, I detail everything you need to know about why money is just killing us. It's a slow strangle. <laughs> and the more technologically advanced we become, the more we are going to feel the pressure of the strangle, the more it's going to impact us. So, uh, yeah, I I had some other stuff I wanted. Shoot, why not? Let's just talk about some of these things. Um, Okay, during the pandemic, hospitals had issues with keeping their data secure. Not enough money because they were exploited by opportunist hackers. Again, it's money driven. It's because we have decided 
to put our faith in something that doesn't actually physically exist. It's if uh, my, in my first episode, I think it was the first episode where I bring up the concept of idiophysical dynamism. Money has no idiophysical dynamic, like it, its idiophysical coupling is very, very low. It, it, it's not coupled with reality at all on any level. There, there's no reason why a $1 bill should have the value of what we think of as what $1 should have. It, th- there's no real root in reality, which means it's easy to abuse. You can, and, and I, I go over the specifics in episode one as to why this is the case. But we're in the middle of a pandemic and hospitals are important. We, we need them to be up and functioning and running. And asshole hackers are out there shutting entire hospitals down, like causing a lot of damage and hurting a lot of people because they're money driven. Now, this sort of, whoops, this sort of thing would not happen in a STEM ep economy. It is designed specifically to make that sort of a thing not only impossible, but something you just wouldn't want to do. There, there's, there is no motive or reason to do it. We already talked about Silicon Valley. Um, yeah, so the reason is, as you know, money allows the power of work to be jostled free from the natural flow of things, which makes it an extremely easy material to manipulate. And so, who's going to manipulate it? Morally destitute people. So then you have something that e- that's easy to manipulate. So the morally destitute people, the pieces of shit, the assholes, are the ones that are manipulating it to quickly gather large amounts of power and use it as they see fit. So the very fact that we have a currency-driven economy, we have money that is, by definition, has a low idiophysical coupling, you invite those types of people to do what they need to do to gather the most amount of money and thereby gathering power because money is the universal symbol of what is power. Now, good people aren't going to do that. People with morals aren't going to do that. People that have, you know, a constitution aren't going to do that. It's the shitty fucking assholes that are going to do that. And we have allowed them to do it simply by using a currency driven economy. Um, ah, and one more argument, these are just kind of notes. I, I just wanted to get them out on the video. Uh, I was going to do a bunch of different ones, but sure, let's get it all out on one video. Currency driven economy causes us to seek relatively immediate rewards. Think about this. Much research and work that should be done in advance to off-put far predicted issues are not being done because there is no demand, aka there is no immediate reward. COVID-19, first of all, we should have been prepared for this. In fact, we kind of were prepared for it, but what happened? Funding dried up after, you know, after the last um, Corona, Corona family virus outbreak, it was cleaned up, not a big deal anymore. Funding dried up, even though it shouldn't have. Why did the funding dry up? What did I just say? Because there's no immediate reward anymore. But now we're kind of fucked. So if you want to Make an argument against anything that I've been presenting. Go for it. But my, <laughs> I mean, my, my entire basis, the entire reason I started this project was because I had got to the point to where I had gathered so much data that it was 
beyond question for me at that point. It, I mean, years and years and years of research and looking at this stuff, <sighs> reading psychology, taking uh, courses, right? It's apparent. It's obvious. It's, it's blindingly fucking frustrating to see it and to know that I have a mountain to fucking climb to get, to get shit to change. Anyway, that is all the shitty things. And it's not all the shitty things. That doesn't even come close. The uh, file is called All the Shitty Things because it's just kind of where I started it, what, four or five days ago and just started kind of like jotting down little notes whenever I think about it. Anybody that thinks money is a good thing, I challenge you to watch all of my videos, follow up on all of the research, go and look up everything that I've presented, all of the uh, psychology and, uh, and sociology on all of the research topics that I present, and then come and talk to me because I can guarantee you, you will change your mind. And if you don't, you're just being biased. For the longest time, I was wondering if I was just being biased, if I was just, I don't know, that, that there's a point where you just gather so much evidence that you're just kind of, uh, the whole point of the, the STEM Prime Research Cast is to see if STEM theory itself is a valid, you know, operable uh, replacement for a currency-driven economy. The, the, the question that the currency-driven economy is not good for us, it's, it's not even a question. It's, it's not good for us, period. There, there is obviously better ways to handle this. So that is that. That is my short little shit list. Fuck you, money. Thanks for the good times. I hope you burn. See you guys later. Um, I, I'm having a, a, another uh, supplemental coming up soon. So um, not directly. It's more of a technical thing uh, for uh, computer communication, um, network communication, secure. It's, it's a security-based thing. Uh, it also dips pretty heavily into physics. But, um, yeah, it's going to be short like this. So, <laughs> good times. All right, see you guys in the next episode. And everybody, again, be safe, take care of each other. And, yeah, catch you guys next time. Bye.